Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on computing variables in SPSS. So I have here in the data view a data set that has an ID variable, a group variable, a pre and post test, and a date. And let's just say this date is the uh, date for the pretest. And I'm going to demonstrate how you can use the compute variable selection from the transform menu item to make certain calculations using the variables you have. So let's, uh, I'll delete what I have here. So let's say that you want to get the average of the pretest and post test. All right, so you would take, well, first of all, you'd, you'd want to name the target variable, and let's just, um, Let's just name it A, and then we can also label it, and the label will put average. And we want to set it as uh, numeric. You can also have it as a string. So we know the average would be the pretest. So I'll move that over. And then you'd add the post test value. And I'm going to put these in parentheses. And then we're going to divide by 2. So that'll, that would be the average. And it'll, it will make this computation and create a whole new variable uh, named A. All right, so I click OK. And you can see in variable A, you have the average of the pretest and posttest. Just as easily, you could calculate the difference between the two, which is actually fairly common when considering uh, pretest and post-test variables. So I'll just call this one uh, D and we'll change the label to difference. And I'll remove the because it keeps what you did before. So I'll move the divide by 2 and just say pretest minus posttest. So if the idea of this particular study was to have a lower posttest score, if that's what you were looking for, uh, if a lower posttest score represented a decrease in, in symptom frequency, duration, and severity, you would hope to see a positive number uh, when you ran this. So we'll click OK. And you can see there's a lot of zeros, but there are some positive numbers as well, indicating that uh, the client's score or the participant's score on the pretest and post-test indicates a reduction in the symptom severity, duration, or frequency, depending on what you're measuring. It could be any construct that you're measuring. So another example that's fairly common uh, would be and, and there's there's a lot of uh, available here under uh, arithmetic, right? Like square root and cosine and sine. A lot of these we probably wouldn't use too frequently. Uh, square root's one that could be used on occasion, but many of these wouldn't be used frequently. But you can see in this function group dialog box, there's arithmetic, but there's also other function groups, uh, a popular one would be, say, date extraction. So you can see I have the date here. This would be the date of the uh, pretest. And say I want to extract uh, the day of the year. All right, so I'll delete what I have in there. And we'll just call this day of year. So that would be uh, this function here, xdate.jday. This would be the day of the year. If you wanted the day of the month, it would be xdate.mday. So you can see it gives you the uh, function here, and it tells you what argument you're going to need. You're going to need a date value. So I'm going to put in the xdate.jday, and then I want to select the date variable 
which is pretest date. So I'm going to move that one up here. And it'll I'll click OK. And you can see here's the day of the year. So it extracted from this date the day of the year. Uh, similarly, you could uh, extract, of course, the day of the um, month. You could extract the month itself. Uh, all kinds of different options under the function group date extraction. So taking a look at another way to do the same thing, say that we wanted to calculate the average of the pretest and post-test. Of course, I did it uh, over here in the variable labeled A. But you can also move down here to uh, statistical. And you can see there's a, uh, well, a few different functions available. One is mean. So if we double click on that, it'll move it to up here. And let's uh, double click on pretest and then uh, post test. So we'll call this one M, right? We'll label it mean. And of course, it will generate the same result as the calculation I did here. So there's a couple ways to arrive at the same calculation for some of these. And uh, for others, there's just one way. Now, I like these uh, this compute variable uh, ability in SPSS. But if you have a lot of computations to make uh, from your variables in, into new variables, I think it's a little easier to use Excel and then import the data into SPSS. But if you've already done that and then you realize you need to add one or two variables, it's convenient to have these functions available in SPSS. As you can see from the compute variable dialog, uh, there's a lot of different function groups, each one containing a number of functions. So there's a lot to explore and to learn about this. Uh, there's a lot of capabilities uh, contained in these function groups. And of course, you have the keypad and the ability to add, subtract, multiply, divide, as well as other abilities here uh, in the center of the dialog. So a useful tool, to be sure. Uh, it's definitely convenient to have it available. And I would recommend exploring it and trying out different uh, function groups and functions uh, in SPSS. I hope you found this video on computing variables in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.